She's been a loose woman since 2016. It's time to hear Stacey's Life Before Loose. <laughs> oh, of what a difference you've made to us, you know, Stacey. Oh, you my really God. Have. I honestly feel like there's not going to be a lot of content. <laughs> oh, <there is. laughs> I was watching James and Thaddeus and, you know, ed first female editors and big soap stars, and I was like, oh, my God. No. Oh, my God, it's well, incredible what you have packed in in a short time. But let's go back to Stacey and Dagenham. You're the middle child, yeah? Yes. Older sister, younger brother. Um, paint us a picture. What kind of character were you? Um, I was very... My sister used to call me Shallow How because I just walked around life thinking I was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, you could have literally had bird poo in your hair and you'd go, doesn't my hair look nice? <laughs> <laughs> I had a really rose-tinted outlook. I think I've probably still got it on everything. Oh, um, oh stop showing these weird old things. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and well, is that's that really just good. your nature, do you think? I think that... You know, people, I think there's a big argument we had about nature versus nurture, but I think fundamentally I was always who I was. And the same with my sister and my brother and the people that I've grown up with. I feel like they were the people they were going to be. Mm. I, I don't... And people, a lot of times, people will say, I'll never change, and I think to myself, I haven't got a clue how. <laughs> <laughs> I only know this default setting of mine. Yeah. And did you love school? Were you sort of into it? Or? I loved primary school. I loved, actually, secondary school. But as I got older, I realised that I was... I was an unfortunate-looking teenager. Oh, <laughs> no, but in a nice not. way. No, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, and I realised that at school, I was only going to have friends if I was, like, the funny one or the yeah. silly one or the naughty one. I wasn't going to have friends... For just the Were way you that... naughty then? I did end up going down the path of destruction. <laughs> 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 but in a cheeky way, I was never horrible. Yeah. But I always felt like, oh, I'm just going to push everyone's boundaries. I also didn't enjoy being told who I was or what I was going to be. When sometimes I felt like growing up in an area that isn't as you know forthcoming as other areas you sometimes feel like people have already made their mind up about your mm. life and what you're going to be and who you're going to become. And I think I never really wanted to stand by that and wanted to challenge it. But mm. being, being naughty, did that make you more popular? Because it usually is that people do tend to yeah. gravitate towards naughty girls, don't they? I think that it... I think that being silly made me more popular. Being naughty actually lost me a few friends in the end because the people around me would get in trouble and, and mm. that wasn't fair on them. So the naughty side of it, I, I think I did it as a rebellious streak, almost to say, mm. no, yeah. no one can tell me who I'm going to be or what I'm going to do. I'll, I'll be whoever I want to be. Yeah. Um, but then the cheeky, silly side of me yeah. me meant I had really lovely friends. So you but, got away with it, basically. Yeah, I mean, yeah. got away with a little it. Bit. Where things have gone, I mean, and, you know, we'll talk later about X Factor and things, and I believe you were a prom queen at some point. Yeah, so, did I think you... I rigged the votes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I went around yeah. saying, I'll vote for you if you vote for me. But <laughs> did you have that thing? Oh, my God, oh, my God, God yeah. 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 Oh, Did you want to be famous? Did you, did you have that thing inside you? Did you know what you wanted to be? No, I never wanted to be... Famous. I don't think that was much of a thing when I was growing up. It was more, I want to be a singer or I want to be an actress or I want to be a dancer. Yeah. The whole famous thing didn't come around till I was in the public eye and then yeah. there was more reality TV and people did just want to be famous. Um, whereas I, I grew up dreaming of, like, being a singer. Oh. And did you make... tell the teachers you want to be a singer? Yeah, I used to say, one day I'm going to they... be a singer. Oh. Did they poo-poo the idea or did they encourage <laughs> you or...? I don't think they did either way. I think most of the time it'd be like, yeah, yeah, first get your exams, do something yeah. proper, mm. make sure you've got your education behind yeah. you and then see, see where it goes. Mm. Uh, my, my parents always supported me. My parents were amazing and just said that I could be whoever I wanted to be. Oh. Did that get derailed to a certain extent when you found out you were pregnant? Oh, uh, when I found out I was pregnant... I definitely... I was at college at the time and I think that I, my ambition was to finish college. I was doing a national diploma for musical theatre, then go on to university and then hopefully have the chance to either teach in that area or go on to do some theatre or, you know, whatever I could in the industry because I loved it so much. Um, and when I got pregnant, I was in the middle of my college course, so I definitely thought, well, I'll never be able to get oh. my national diploma, so I won't be able to go to university. So I... And I, 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 it, I don't think it's as easy for people 
to find auditions and find the right people and meet the right people to get into this industry. Mm. So I kind of did think that probably that was not going to happen mm. for me. How did you feel when you found out, though? Yeah. That you were... Oh, God. I remember... 17. ..being in a cafe and sitting with my dad and my stepmom and my and I literally was gagging and I was like, Dad, your onions, those onions stink, your breath stink. <laughs> and I couldn't <laughs> sit next to him. I was, like, heaving in the corner. And he was like, well, I haven't got any onions. And I thought, that's weird. <laughs> just, I just didn't think anything of it. I just thought, well, that's so weird. I can smell them. I thought someone must have had, like, extra strong steroid onions somewhere. <laughs> and um, my stepmom, when we got home that night, she took me upstairs and was like, here you go, and handed me a pregnancy test. And I was like, what the heck is that for? The thought of my parents knowing that I'd even had sex just made me want to die. I was just like, I don't need that. <laughs> I'm absolutely fine. How many fine. weeks were you at that point? Um, well, I didn't. I don't. I didn't find out. So she then we then I weed on it, and you know sometimes. <laughs> as you do. As you do. As you do. <laughs> he <honestly. laughs> Just in case anyone was wondering how to use it. Um, <laughs> uh, sometimes, I'm like, but when I've been trying to have a baby, I've like done the test and waited ages praying for one of those lines to appear. Mm -hmm. When I did this test, about 30 seconds later, it just went, king, <laughs> pregnant. <laughs> and I was like, I, I just did it. I don't think I really believed it. I kind of felt like, oh, yeah, but these things show you that all the time. I was 17. I was like, what a load of rubbish. Everything's going to be fine. And when I came to terms with the idea that I might actually be pregnant and my stepmom convinced me to tell my parents, I just... I felt a bit sick about the whole thing. I just felt mm. like, what the hell am I going to do? Did you know absolutely that you were going to go ahead and have the baby? Um, no, I would say that there was definitely times when I considered not going down that route, for sure, because I was so young and the, my boyfriend at the time was extremely young and it wasn't what either of us had planned. Mm. Um, I think it's a really tough decision to make and I think whatever way that you go is the way that you go and that's OK. Mm. I... I uh, the only thing that I am um, that I always remember is that my parents just wouldn't give me any input whatsoever. So although they were really upset for me and and hurt and but disappointed, they never told me whether I should go ahead and have the baby or not go ahead and have the baby, which at the time was absolute turmoil. All I wanted was my mum and dad to tell me what, what to do. do. Yeah. I just felt like I couldn't make that such a big decision on my own, and I really needed them, but. Looking back, in hindsight, it's the best thing they could have ever done because I made that decision on my own. And yeah. I took the step yeah. yeah. that, forward. But, but being so young and being a parent, you, you did it. Like, you managed it. I don't know, Kelly. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> saying it was easy, but you did do it. And you should just give yourself a pat on the back for that. No, you know... I... I haven't done anything that thousands and thousands of people have done as well. You know, I um, was in such a privileged position to have family... Oh, you're so young, ..with me. Yeah. Um, I had a, a mum and a dad and a stepmom, like, basically three parents to be there for me. Uh, that is such a privilege. You know, I was in a, in a group of teenage pregnant women um, when I was going through my pregnancy and a lot of them had so much less than that fundamental family set up. So I, mm. I feel really privileged. Even though we didn't have any money and we struggled in that sense, actually, my biggest privilege was yeah. them. That support network support. and the love that was around wow. you. <laughs> but now it's uh, time to find out why this iconic moment very nearly didn't happen. I see trees that are green expected to be that good. Thank you. Thank you. Louis? Stacey, yeah, I totally agree with Cheryl. I was totally... I didn't expect your voice to be that good. It was a real surprise, but it's so cute, your personality and the voice. OK, we're going to vote. Danny, yes or no? Oh, yeah. Louis? Absolutely, yes. <laughs> Cheryl? Yes. Stacey, you've got four yeses. Congratulations. Thank you. Wow. Oh, yay! You wow. absolutely nailed that. What 
watch that, like, it my mum, and it up. really made me emotional. Oh. <laughs> That's how my mum would watch that. <laughs> Wait, you so why did nailed it? Why did it nearly not happen, yeah. though? Yeah, why did it yeah. Oh, um, so basically, that was about, oh, my goodness, I don't know if it was, like, one in the morning or whenever it was, it was really late at night. I was like the last person to be seen. And the judges were so tired. They'd seen thousands of people all day. And it, they, I think they were what they were saying was that actually they wanted to end the night and that was it. They wanted to go home and London was done. But somebody, one of the producers, really pushed for them to see me and just wait to see me, which changed my life in the end. Mm. So, Lime, yeah. so that would have been it. That, that would have been, been like it. the next would... day or no, no, no. Not as far as I was aware. That was the last London. <sighs> oh, my God. And that would have been it. And yeah. it all started to change from there, didn't yeah. it? When was it? You did an interview. Was it on... You oh did it on God. GMB, didn't yeah. you? <laughs> yeah. This was GMTV, actually, GMTV that was then. Was at the I, time. I think we've got that. Oh Let's my have God, a look. no. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. How has your life changed since <laughs> Saturday night? Changed. I'm here, look, <laughs> on this sofa. What do you think of our gaff? It's all right, isn't it? <laughs> Smaller than what I thought. Smaller than you thought. Is it oh, all right? It's so nice. It's OK. Do you like... Messier. Have you looked behind the sofa? Don't look... Oh, no, don't, don't, don't. Don't, don't tell anybody what's behind there. I can't believe oh. it. That moat takes so long to clean every morning. Oh. Yeah. yeah. And the trout, they're actually well. real trout. Alligators are real. <laughs> um, how was how was Saturday night? Did you like your performance? Was it was it good for you? I've had it quite hard to watch it back. I was like, oh my gosh, that's me. <laughs> 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 No idea what it feels like <laughs> to one minute be in, at an audition holding a nine month old baby, being sick all over yourself, but thinking I'm never, never, there's no way I'm ever going to get anywhere. Oh, and then to be on that, um, on GMTV. So I mean, yeah. I remember thinking, Oh, it's just a picture. You know the background? I genuinely, for years, thought they had a view over the city. <laughs> <laughs> it's not real. It was just a picture and I was just gobsmacked at this picture. Kind of what it felt like, that moment when you saw all of those four judges who are really prolific in their own careers, like, you know, saying that you've done an amazing job. What did that feel like? Honestly, I, I can't describe it. It's like... It, for a long, when you grow up, you daydream about things, but life quickly tells you that's just a daydream and it never happens. So when something like that does happen, you start believing in like, mm. I don't know, you just start believing in, in things that you never thought possibility yeah. were possible. And it, yeah. yeah, so it was. It but just wasn't it your third try as well? You, you yeah. tried to get on there. Yeah, loads of times. Like I said earlier, there wasn't a massive amount of opportunity when I was growing up. It wasn't like, oh, so and so knows this person, go and record with that guy or meet with him or... We didn't know anyone, so mm. there were those shows and they seemed like the only hope yeah. to get somewhere if, mm. if you really wanted to. Where were you working at? Were you working at the time? Or? Yeah, I was working... I was still at college when I uh -huh. auditioned because um, I ended up, after having Zach, I went back to college to finish my diploma um, and I was working at a chip shop <laughs> called Oh My God and then... <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God! Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Oh, my God! It was wow. And then I was like, Thank you for that. Anytime. I'll take you there one day, Carol. Oh my God. It's an amazing battered sausage. But, um. <laughs> oh, I love a battered sausage. Yeah, I loved it there. I loved working there. I was really good at wrapping shoes. <laughs> <laughs> and did you go back in after that? Night? Oh, yeah, I go back in all the time. Well, I haven't been in a little while, but I do go back in all the time. It's one but, of the best. But what about after that audition and all of that? Did you go back in for your shift? Yeah, of <laughs> course. You, you don't make any money by being on the X Factor. <laughs> I still have to live. And yeah. So, what did they say? Job. Um, I think they were, it was back when it was a really... It was such a massive show, but it also... These people... We were just normal kids, people, like, going on yeah. a, on the show, so you kind of just go back into normal life and everyone's like, eh, well done, come on, get your apron on. You're like, OK. <laughs> but, but from there, you sort of worked with Whitney Houston and all kinds of massive stars. Oh. Like, what was that like? I remember saying to my mum... Um, do you know what? If this is it, that's enough. Look, honestly, that experience was the best experience of my life. Like you said, I got to meet people that aren't even aren't around anymore. Whitney mm. Houston, George Michael. Yeah. I got to meet Alicia Keys and sing with them and do masterclasses with them. It was just... I, it was so surreal to be wow. all doing a shift at Oh My God and then <laughs> with Whitney and Bobby. Like, <laughs> should you ever sing along, Whitney? It's, just, so, it's not real. Oh. It doesn't feel so, real. So, Stacey, at, at 30, is there anything left for you to do? Oh, God. 
Yeah, I mean, I don't feel like... I've, when I listen to your stories and when I speak to you, like, I don't feel like I've come close to achieving anything. You Stacey, know, you were so, supposed to oh say I'd really God. like to win an NTA. Uh, oh, yeah, so yeah. I'd really <laughs> like to win an NTA. If I could do anything, Kay, <laughs> an, an NTA, NTA. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Please vote. <laughs> <laughs> and the website is there on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Stacey, it's been lovely to romp down uh, your life before, Liz. Oh, thank you so much. It's such you. a lovely yeah. addition. Yeah.